In this three minute introduction, I'm going to answer four frequently asked questions about JavaScript. What is JavaScript? What can you do with it? Where does JavaScript code run? And what is the difference between JavaScript and ECMAScript? So let's start with the first question. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is one of the most popular and widely used programming languages in the world right now. It's growing faster than any other programming languages and big companies like Netflix, Walmart, and PayPal build entire applications around JavaScript. And here's the average salary of a JavaScript developer in the United States. That is $72,000 a year. So it's a great opportunity to get a good job out of learning JavaScript. You can work as a front-end developer or a back-end developer or a full-stack developer who knows both the front-end and the back-end. Now the second question, what can you do with JavaScript? For a long time, JavaScript was only used in browsers to build interactive web pages. Some developers refer to JavaScript as a toy language, but those days are gone because of huge community support and investments by large companies like Facebook and Google. These days you can build full-blown web or mobile apps as well as real-time networking applications like chats and video streaming services, command line tools, or even games. Here's an example. The third question, where does JavaScript code run? JavaScript was originally designed to run only in browsers. So every browser has what we call a JavaScript engine that can execute JavaScript code. For example, the JavaScript engines in Firefox and Chrome are SpiderMonkey and V8. In 2009, a very clever engineer called Ryan Dahl took the open source JavaScript engine in Chrome and embedded it inside a C++ program. He called that program Node. So Node is a C++ program that includes Google's V8 JavaScript engine. Now with this, we can run JavaScript code outside of a browser. So we can pass our JavaScript code to Node for execution. And this means with JavaScript, we can build the backend for our web and mobile applications. So in a nutshell, JavaScript code can be run inside of a browser or in Node. Browsers and Node provide a runtime environment for our JavaScript code. And finally, the last question, what is the difference between JavaScript and ECMAScript? Well, ECMAScript is just a specification. JavaScript is a programming language that confirms to this specification. So we have this organization called ECMA, which is responsible for defining standards. They take care of this ECMAScript specification. The first version of ECMAScript was released in 1997. Then starting from 2015, ECMA has been working on annual releases of a new specification. So in 2015, they released ECMAScript 2015, which is also called ECMAScript version 6 or ES6 for short. This specification defined many new features for JavaScript. All right, enough theory, let's see JavaScript in action. So every browser has a JavaScript engine and we can easily write JavaScript code here without any additional tools. Of course, this is not how we build real world applications, but this is just for a quick demo. So open up Chrome, right click on an empty area and go to inspect. Now this opens up Chrome developer tools. Here, select the console tab. This is our JavaScript console and we can write any valid JavaScript code here. So type this console.log, put a single code here and then hello world. Another single code to terminate, close the parentheses and add a semicolon at the end. Now, as you go through the course, you're going to understand exactly what all this means for now, don't worry about it. So now press enter and you can see the hello world message on the console. We can also write mathematical expressions here. For example, two plus two, we get four. Or we can do something like this, alert, parentheses, single quote, yo. Enter and here's an alert. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about setting up your development environment for writing JavaScript code. In order to write JavaScript code, you need a code editor. There are various code editors out there, including Visual Studio Code or VS Code, Sublime Text, Atom, and so on. Out of these, my favorite is Visual Studio Code that you can download from code.visualstudio.com. It's a very simple, 
lightweight, cross-platform, and powerful editor. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code on your machine, go ahead and download it. The other thing I want you to install is Node. You can download Node from nodejs.org. Now, technically, you don't necessarily need Node to execute JavaScript because as I explained before, you can execute JavaScript code inside of a browser or in Node. But it's good to have Node on your machine because we use that to install third-party libraries. And also, later in this section, I'm going to show you a preview of Node. So, pause the video now and download Visual Studio Code as well as Node. Once you're done, come back, continue watching. All right, now I want you to create a new folder. Call that js-basics. The name doesn't really matter. We just want to have a folder for writing all the code in this course. Now, drag and drop this folder into Visual Studio Code. Okay, we've got this folder open. Let's add a new file here, index.html. Now, you don't really need to know HTML in order to take this course. But if you want to be a front-end developer, you should know your HTML well. Now, in this file, I want you to type an exclamation mark and then press tab. This generates some basic HTML boilerplate. We don't really care about any of this code here. We're going to use this as a host for our JavaScript code. You're going to see that in the next lecture. So save the changes. Now, open the extensions tab here. Here in this box, search for live server. So live server is a very lightweight web server that we're going to use to serve our web application. So install this, then you will have to restart Visual Studio Code. When you're done, go to the Explorer tab, right click index.html and select open with live server. This will open up Chrome or your default browser and point it to this address. That's where our web application is served from. Now, currently we have an empty page. Now, to make sure that everything is working properly, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Here in the body section, let's add an H1, press tab and type hello world. Now, save the changes. Back in the browser, we can see this page is refreshed automatically. And we've got the Hello World heading here. In the next lecture, you're going to write your first JavaScript code. All right, now we're ready to write our first JavaScript code. In order to write JavaScript code here, we need a script element. There are two places where we can add a script element. We can add that here in the head section or in the body section. The best practice is to put the script element at the end of the body section after all the existing elements. So here after h1, I'm going to type script and press tab. This is our script element. Now, why did I say that as a best practice, we should put the script element here? Well, there are two reasons for that. One reason is that the browser parses this file from top to bottom. So if you put the script element here, in the head section, you might have a lot of JavaScript code there. So your browser may get busy parsing and executing that JavaScript code, and it won't be able to render the content of the page. So this will create a bad user experience. Your user looks at your web page, it's white or blank, while your browser is busy parsing and executing your JavaScript code. So that's reason one. The second reason is that almost always the code that we have in between script elements needs to talk to the elements on this web page. For example, we may want to show or hide some elements. So by adding the code here at the end of the body section, we'll be confident that all these elements are rendered by the browser. Now there are exceptions to this rule. Sometimes you're using third party code that has to be placed in the head section, but these are exceptions. As I told you before, as a best practice, you should add your JavaScript code at the end of the body section. Now here, we're going to write the same code that you wrote in the last lecture. Console.log, hello world. But we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. What we have here is a statement. A statement is a piece of code 
that expresses an action to be carried out. In this case, we want to log a message on the console. All statements in JavaScript should be terminated by a semicolon. What we have here in between single quotes is called a string. A string is a sequence of characters. Now in JavaScript, we also have this notation. We can add two slashes, and this represents a comment. So here we can add some description to our code, and this description is ignored by the JavaScript engine. It's not executed. It's purely for documenting the code when you want to explain to other developers why you have written this code this way. You don't want to explain what the code does because that should be clear in the code itself. So here, I don't want to write something like logging something on the console. That's so obvious in the code, right? Instead, we want to explain why's and how's. So for this demo, I'm just going to add a simple comment. This is my first JavaScript code. Now save the changes back in the browser. We need to bring the console back up. So right click somewhere and go to inspect or alternatively you can use a shortcut that is alt command and i on mac or alt control i on windows that brings up the console tab if the console tab is not immediately visible make sure to select it here and here you can see the hello world message now while we can easily write javascript code in between the script element in a real-world application, we have thousands or even million lines of code. We don't want to write all that code in line here. We want to extract and separate our JavaScript code from our HTML code. Let me give you a metaphor. Think of your house. In your bedroom, you have your bed and your clothes. You don't store your clothes in the kitchen. This is what we call separation of concerns. We have the same principle in programming. So we want to separate HTML, which is all about content, from JavaScript, which is all about behavior. How should your web page behave? What should happen when we hover our mouse over a given element? Maybe something should pop up, maybe something should be hidden. So we use JavaScript to implement behavior. So open up the Explorer window, add a new file, call it index.js. Now back in index.html, cut all this JavaScript code here and then paste it in index.js. Now in this simple application, we have a single file, a single JavaScript file. In a real world application, we have hundreds or even thousands of JavaScript files. Later in the course, you will learn how to combine these files into a bundle and serve that bundle to the client. Now save the changes back in index.html. Now that all our JavaScript code is in a separate file, we need to reference that file here. So. Let's add an attribute here, SRC, which is short for source, and set it to index.js. So this tells the browser that our JavaScript code is now in index.js. Save the changes back in the browser. You can still see the hello world message, and that confirms that our code is still working. In the next lecture, we're going to execute this code in Node. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like this video, then give it a like. Share this video if you find out this video useful. If you think that if something is missing in this video or you want us to cover some other content related to programming languages, technology or anything, then do comment down. We will work on that and don't forget to visit to our playlist section. You will find some interesting content there. Subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.